guys um welcome to this lesson on environmental management so we're going to be looking at management in context we'll be looking at february march 2022 um paper so um quickly before we continue if you've not subscribed to the channel please subscribe so you have a uh, notification on other videos that we are going to be uploading okay so um management in context here we have uh be given a world map uh, world map showing the location of guinea so most of the question that you'll be asked will be relating to, will be related to this particular country now this is where guinea is now the next map will be a magnified map of only guinea alone uh, which is now this so on this map you have you will now be given some set of um, information about guinea which is this now uh, the area of guinea this is the land area the population of guinea is 12.7 million as of 2020 uh, children per women is 9.4 uh, life expectancy is 61.6 years currency is guinea franc which is in conversion one usd is equal to 9840 guinea franc now the language uh, used in guinea is french and the local language and the climate of guinea is tropical climate which is warm to hot all year round rainy season lasts from may to october the terrain of guinea is generally a flat coastal plain hilly to mountainous interior and forested region in the southeast the main economic activity is agriculture agricultural production fishing mining and the major types of minerals there are bauxite uh, iron diamonds and gold so the republic of guinea is less economically developed so it's an ledc with a high population growth rate uh, guinea has a youthful age structure with 60 percent of the population under the age of 25. guinea has the world largest deposit of bauxite and the government is developing agricultural production and the rural economy both unemployment remain very high okay so what's the first question now is this calculate the number of people in ghana that are under the age of of guinea sorry that are under the age of 25 so this is quite simple if you check i said how many percent uh 60 percent of the total population are under the age of 25 so your answer will be 60 over 100 times the total population which is 12 12.7 million uh 12.7 million now once you punch your calculator uh, what you will get will be uh 7.62 million now uh so suggest reasons why 60 percent of the population in guinea is under the age of 70 is under the age of 25 now coming back here you find out that guinea have a high birth rate of 4.93 so first they have a high high birth rate birth rate of 4.93 per women and another major reason why the they are under the age of 25 is they have low life expectancy low life expectancy of i think 61.1 percent uh um, yes if you check uh back life expectancy 61.6 okay sorry 61.6 um so the next question is just two marks so i'll give you a two marks. next question is suggest to impact of youthful 
of a youthful age structure on a less economically developed country. Uh, one of the major problem of having a lot of young people in a country, uh, it's first, there'll be uh, lack of enough schools, there'll be need for proper health care, Um, you, you things like um, unemployment rate will be high. Unemployment rate is high. Uh, the combat things like uh, overcrowding. within certain areas and this can also lead to high crime rate. Now the photograph shows a young person transporting goods in Guinea. Okay, using a donkey. I think this is a donkey and okay so describe three pieces of evidence in this photograph that suggests that Guinea is a less economically developed country. Uh, using this photograph you can see things like um, no proper road so no no third road here yeah, so i can write it no third road the road is just made up of dust um using this is also an indication no cars no cars uh you only have um things like um no cars on the road uh, using using donkey to transport um, so on this road too you find out that there is no drainage so during rainfall it might be difficult to transport uh, goods along this the same path. Uh, let's see on this same diagram if I can find something again. Okay, no high rise buildings. So you find that there are only simple buildings here. So we have uh, simple buildings. Um, on this same road, there is no street light. So, uh, you just need three of that for full mark. Now, here is this question. Say peanut. Peanuts are an important cash crop grown by many farmers in Guinea. The drawing shows a peanut plant, okay? Peanut root, blah 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 blah. So let's see which question. Describe the process of photosynthesis. This is great. So um, photosynthesis is carried out by green leaf. So the first thing is. Um, uh, <laughs> the first thing you look at carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is absorbed um, sorry the word absorb is wrong carbon dioxide diffuses into the leaf in, through the stomata carbon dioxide diffuses into the leaf through the stomata through the stomata then water is absorbed by osmosis through the roots And transported uh, 
through xylem to the leaf. Now, you find out that the green leaf the green leaf uh, will now uh, um, produce chlorophyll which will trap which trap sunlight uh, for photosynthesis so lastly further that the carbon dioxide and water react in the presence of uh, light to form glucose and oxygen is given out that's all uh, so the the flowers of a peanut plant are self-pollinating this means that insect do not have to visit every flower for pollination to occur. Describe the process of pollination in peanut plant. Now, if they are self-pollinating, uh, you find out that, that uh, pollen, pollen grains, so you just describe self-pollination. Uh, pollen grains can be the male sex cell Uh, moves from the anther moves from the anther to the stigma of the same plant Oil is extracted from peanut. The peanut oil is exported to countries, to many countries. So just one benefit of exporting peanut oil instead of peanuts. And the peanut oil is, uh, we have a higher value. Higher value. So you find out that there will be more money will be made so just two possible uses for the peanut waste after the peanut oil has been extracted from it um, you can use the peanut waste to feed animals you can convert it to animal feed you can the peanut waste you can use it to make um, biofuel um, another thing is you can help convert it to fertilizers that is things like organic manure that's it now, uh, suggest reasons why the government of Guinea encourage farmers to grow peanuts. Uh, this is just the importance of agriculture. Um, employment, it keeps people employed. That's one. Uh, another reason can be uh, the government... The government will derive money or revenue.
venue. From the export of this product, and you can you can you can use multiplier factor here. Uh, the money derived can be used to build infrastructure. Can be used to build infar. infrastructure sorry that's it now we have another question here that has to do with climate I think so it's in data now peanuts need an average minimum temperature of 24 degrees Celsius and an annual rainfall of at least 700 millimeters to grow well now the table shows some climate data for one year at a weather station in a peanut growing region of guinea now we have month uh, we have um, temperature in degrees celsius and rainfall in millimeters i remember they said the rainfall is between uh, may i think so to october uh, let's see i think they made mention of it here rainfall may to october yeah so if you look at that find that from may to october if you look at that's where you have most of the rainfall now calculate the total annual rainfall uh, this is simple all you need to do the total annual rainfall is to add all the values here so it will be uh, 0 plus 1 plus 6 plus 34 plus 84 plus 1 47 plus 2 46 plus 308 304 plus 228 plus 95 plus 7 plus 1 if you add everything together you should be able to have 1000 153 mm that's it now explain why farmers in this region can grow peanut um, you find out that, that first there is an information they gave us here they say peanuts grow in an area that need an average temperature of this and annual rainfall of at least 700 so you find out that the climate is suitable for peanut production first the climate is suitable for peanut production that's one uh, another reason can be the temperature, if you look at this, is 24 and above all year round, so it makes it suitable. Temperature is 24 degrees Celsius and above all year round. And the annual rainfall is greater than 700 millimeters. Because this is the total annual. Is greater than 700 millimeters. Bam, that's it. Now, so just why peanut plants in this region grow more slowly in January than in any other year, any other month. In January, you look at a simple. Um, Rainfall is zero millimeters in January, and it's also the coolest month in terms of temperature, and there is no rainfall. So it's simple, just come, no rainfall, or you put slash rainfall is zero 
millimeters. Now is the coolest month of just 24 degrees Celsius. Um, so that's it. So because of this, no rainfall, coolest month, you find out that photosynthesis will be less or practically impossible. Explain why farmers in this region expect soil erosion to occur in August. So in August, the highest rainfall. So you expect soil erosion to occur. So it has August has the highest rainfall. Always use statistics, please. August has have the highest rainfall. Uh, of 304 millimeters of 304 millimeters so you find out that, that as a result there will be um, soil will easily be washed away will easily be washed away and um, things like um, things like um, uh, there's something that's coming to my head that uh, have good we wash away because Runoff, runoff has um, has increased due to the due to heavy rainfall, and you know heavy rainfall will also reduce interception and um, infiltration, so you can add that too. Now, the farmers use some field to grow peanuts each year. The farmers use the same field, sorry, use the same field to grow peanuts each year. So just why farmers expect the yield of peanuts to go down after several years? Uh, this is quite simple because of, you look at method to conserve the soil. So here, suggest reason, the soil is not being conserved, so there will be um, mineral ions will be, uh, will drop. So you find out that the minerals, minerals will uh, reduce. Now, another reason is uh, fertility. Soil fertility will also will reduce. You look at um, things like there will be increase in pest because it's monoculture now. So there will be increase in pest. Another reason why, so just why farmers expect yield to go down. Another reason why yield will go down is because there is no crop rotation. Now, the next question is, this stem and leaves of peanut plant can be used to feed livestock. Suggest so how this help peanut farming a sustainable activity. How can it be uh, sustainable? The reason is there is first since the stem can be used no waste. Um, another reason is um, it, there is no need, no need to buy, to buy food for livestock, since you can just use your peanut plants to feed them. Um, let me see if, what else, what else can I add this? Uh, there'll be. Um, okay, it 
it, this question I'm looking at it from a two-way perspective now this are the importance of uh, the plants to the livestock so the livestock waste the, not, the livestock waste too can be used as fertilizers for the peanut plant so it's a two-way interaction the livestock waste can be used as fertilizers too for the peanut plant okay that's it they say some peanut farmers are not able to keep livestock so just other ways these farmers can make their farming sustainable they are unable to keep livestock how can they make uh, farming sustainable uh, in order for your agriculture to be sustainable you need organic you need to use organic um, fertilizers which will help to control trification you need to bring in crop rotation um, you need to do things like um, bring in irrigation all this help farming to be sustainable you you can decide to grow other crops to reduce the impact of monoculture um, so you can use genetic modified crops you can grow pest resistant crops also okay that's it for question one let's see what question two brings question two now a student talks to a peanut farmer question two is usually the research aspect so so a student talks to a peanut farmer the farmer says i have two fields of peanuts field a and field b I usually harvest more peanuts from feed A. So field, field A have more yield. I think the harvest from field B is being reduced by insect pests on the leaves and on the soil. Now the student decided to investigate how many insect pests there are in each field. So first the student investigate the insect pest on the leaves of the peanut plant and the student did the following first select 10 peanut plant at random so the students use random sampling select 10 peanut plant at random in field A use a putter to collect insects collect insects from the top five leaves of each plant recall the result in a table repeat the method for field B describe how the putter show in the diagram is used to collect insect you can add labels to the diagram to help you um, first you find out that, that um, putters you this you suck this is where you suck through and here it has I think a fine coat on uh, more like fine net so the insect will not be able to pass through then you draw it through this other one so first you suck so this is a tube you suck tube on uh, the left because this is the right tube this is the left tube on the left and insect will be sucked in through the right tube so insect will 
they sucked in through the right tube then what will happen there is a gaze good this is uh, like a net a gaze g u g a u z e yeah now the gaze prevent the insect from entering your mouth that's it prevent the insect from entering your mouth that's it so insects will be trapped inside this putta pot so insect trapped in the pot that's all now so describe a method the student can use to select the peanut plant at random from each field describe the method the student can use student can use to select the peanut plant at random from each field um, one method you can use is uh, you should divide the field into areas and use random numbers generator uh, divide the field into areas can use use um, random number generator that's all now we are also told here that the table shows result of the student leaf investigation so this is the result for field a and field b we have the total 50 80 and the average uh, the average is the total divided by the number of plants which is 10 50 divided by 10 80 divided by 10 give you the average so the first question is state the highest number of insects collected from one plant for field for each field from one plant for a is 10 and for b is 13 that's the highest that's all now they say plot a bar chart of the average number of insects on five leaves for each field plot a bar chart of the average number of insects on five leaves for each field We come back average so um, plot a bar chart of the average number of insects on five leaves for each field so this is the table shows the result uh, I have my average here so number of insect on five leaves so this will be so you come you label your asses so I'll put it here um, so I wanted to rotate it <laughs> number of please do not abbreviate in the exam number of uh, insect on five leaves can put average average number of insect on five leaves and uh, we have is five and eight and your distant your graph need to be large enough so if it's five and eight I can decide to make each five 
1 will it take up to 8 yeah it should if I make this okay let me just make it um, I think this is 10 get about 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 this 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 4 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 8 do I have it is the highest okay so let me just get it to 10 there about so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 I think the tenth one should be 10 so remember in bar graph they don't touch in histogram they touch so I can decide to make 0 this is 0 so my plant A can be here. So let me see. Plant A is what? 5. Um, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this will be my 5. So for this, I can decide to take 5 bars and draw it downwards. This is for plant A, sorry. Then for plant B, let me leave 5, 4 lines and go to 8. Take another five, draw it downwards, and just make sure you also leave space in between. Then that's it. Now, uh, pitfall trap. Now, the student also investigated the number of insect pests on the soil. The student put a pitfall trap in the soil next to the peanut plant in 10 different locations in each field so this is a pitfall trap now after 24 hours the student counts the number of insect pests in each trap in each trap and takes an average uh, the table shows the result. Field A, the total number is 4, and field B, 2 is 4. Average number of insects trapped in. So, they say the farmer think that the peanut harvest in field B is being reduced by insect pests on the leaves and on the soil. Describe whether the result of the student's two investigations support this, support this answer. Um, You find out that the first thing you look at is uh, any two for leaves you separate it um, for leaves is for leaves yes because the number the, you can put the average the average number of insect pests is is um, ten for field for field um, B and is it ten? Sorry, eight for field B and five for field A. Um, they, which indicate that which indicate a higher number 
in um, field B. However, for soil, it's not correct because the average numbers are the same. Because the average numbers are the same. Which is um, 4. Now, so the student noticed that there are differences in soil in the soil comparison in each field, which could also affect peanut harvest. Complete the table to name three types of soil in order of size. In order of size, the first one is the largest one in size is sand, followed by silt, followed by clay. Clay is the smallest in size. That's all. Two mark. That's three marks. Uh, phosphate is a mineral ion that is present in a fertile soil. State the name of two other MPK. So if you have phosphate, you have nitrate. nitrate ion you can also have potassium ion that's all nitrogen potassium and phosphorus mineral ion are a component of soil state three other component of soil um, other component of soil can be water air um, you have organic matter organic matter things like um you can bring in microorganisms it's also correct now they said the farmer uses bonds in field a and field B to reduce soil erosion. State one other strategies for reducing soil erosion. Um, you can plant trees, plant trees, which will act as um, they act as wind breaks. You can do uh, contour plowing. You can do terracing. You can have um, things. Okay, I've put planting trees. Blah blah blah. Okay, uh, mix cropping. Uh, maintaining vegetation cover. That will go. Question number three. They said the photograph shows some compressed earth building blocks. Okay. Wet earth is compressed into block shape by a machine. The blocks are then drained in the sun. The compressed, so you can see the compressed block and it has holes inside. The complex earth building block have holes in them to make them hollow. Suggest two benefit of making blocks hollow. Two benefit of making blocks hollow. First, it will make it light, L-I-G-H-T. Um, so it's less dense. Another reason is there will be less time to dry. Another reason is uh, less material to make more blocks. To make more blocks. 
The compressed earth building blocks can also be made by hand. So just two advantage of making blocks by machine. Uh, simple now. It will be faster. Using machine will make uh, blocks will be more uniform. Um, machine will lead to less human labor. Using machine can also um, um, compress compress to be compressed harder. Simple. Now, hollow building blocks are also made from cement. The process of making cement releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Explain how releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere contributes to enhanced greenhouse effect. This is also very straightforward. Um, because first, CO2 is a greenhouse gas. And what it does is it helps to trap long wave radiation from the earth's surface so it trap long wave radiation from the earth surface another thing it does um, so thereby it will increase the global earth temperature that's it now state the name of one gas other than carbon dioxide that contribute to a has greenhouse effect um, simple you have methane things like CFCs Wood can also be used for building. An advantage of using wood for building is that it limits the use of cement. Suggest so two other ways the government of Guinea can limit the use of cement. Can limit the use of cement. Um, first, they can increase the price. Increase prices of cement. The government can come up with um, taxation on cement use. Um, limit the number of people that sell cement. Also help now the next question is suggest to disadvantage of using wood for building and using wood can lead to deforestation which can also eventually lead to soil erosion so this can lead to deforestation uh, which can lead to soil erosion can lead to habitat loss it can lead to uh, it can destroy the food chain it can lead to loss of biodiversity now they said mining is an important industry in Guinea. The photograph shows an open pit diamond mine in Guinea. Suggest so reason why there is less risk 
of injury and death working in an open pit mine compared with working in a shaft mine. Shaft is a subsurface mine. Um, some of the reasons is in open pit mine there is no risk of collapse. In open pit no risk of collapse. In open pit also there is no no suffocation, no risk of collapse, no risk of uh, suffocation. Mm, there is no risk of explosion. And you can just put explosion. No risk of flooding also. You can add that. So just reasons why local people want diamond mining to continue in the area. It's simple. Because of um, it provides them with jobs, it provides them with um, jobs and the, brings money to the local area. So if they have job, there will be money in the local area. And um, there will be money for infrastructure. They say, explain why an environmental impact assessment must be completed before a mining license can be issued. Uh, environment. So this is first to make sure, make sure uh, the impact on the environment is minimized. On the environment to make sure the impact of the environment is minimized. Um, another reason is to make sure it does not does not destroy habitat. Mm, you can add things like um, um, to help to ensure safety of workers. Um, another reason can be um, to know how to know how waste will um, will be dealt with now so describe ways the landscape shown in the photograph can be restored after the mining is finished um, this is simple uh, landscape can be restored in different ways So you can use things like, uh, let me see, okay, how can you restore a landscape after mining is done? So one of the ways to restore a landscape is you use things like bioremediation. You can make it a landfill site um, so you fill with hole and cover it you can convert it to a lake convert to a lake uh, which can be used for fishing you can also do things like um, soil improvement. So you can convert it and use it back for agriculture. So you can 
as a result plant trees slash seeds there um, you can also cover with topsoil you can decide to build convert it to a golf course okay, the last question here it's um, so there is a large global demand for rocks and minerals. Describe strategies for the sustainable use of rocks and minerals. One of the major strategies when it has to sustainable use, you recycle. And um, you reuse. Another one is you come up with legislations. Another one is... Um, since it's rocks and minerals, you should come up with, you use alternatives. Alternative minerals. Um, you increase the efficiency of extraction. Increase the efficiency efficiency of extraction you also increase the efficiency of use and you can introduce quotas of extraction Now that's it. And uh, please, if you've not subscribed and you've learned a lot from this, uh, please subscribe to this channel. And uh, this is remember I said it's February, March, twenty twenty two. So good luck in your exams, and um, thank you.